Good evening. Welcome to Evening Vespers from First United Methodist Church of Ann Arbor. This week's scripture is taken from the Gospel of John, the story of the man blind from birth who is healed by Jesus. It's one of many stories in the days and weeks leading up to the events of Holy Week, where Jesus' actions are questioned by the Pharisees. At first read, it might seem that the return of sight for the man is a central event. As is true with Jesus' words, we often find more questions than we see at first. May our eyes, ears, and hearts be open as we seek illumination from God. Please join me in this responsive call to worship. God is in the water that restores our soul. And And God God is is in the the night when when we we lose our our way. God is in today and tomorrow, raising up leaders, prophets, and dreamers. And And God God is is in in the the wilderness wilderness with us us every every step step of the way. So with confidence we declare, if If God God is is in those spaces, then then God God is is surely here. Let us worship the God of creation. Let us worship the God of of wilderness wilderness spaces. Join me singing, Be Thou My Vision. Be Thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that Thou art. For marvels thought by day or by night, Waking or sleeping, thy presence, my light. Be thou my wisdom, and thou my true word. I ever with thee, and thou with me, Lord. Thou art the only first in my heart. Great God of heaven, my treasure, thou art. The Wilderness is a Place of Disruption, a poem by Sarah R. My grandfather was a good man but he believed that wilderness emotions were not to be seen. Cry with the door closed. Don't dwell on the negative. Chin up, kid. We've been here before. My grandfather was a good man, but I'd like to say the wilderness is here to interrupt your previously scheduled programming. Like water in the desert and setting the slaves free, The wilderness might be the very thing we need, the very thing we dream, the very thing we plead for. I guess what I'm trying to say is that it never seems appealing to let a bird in the house. But if you do, then you might as well open every window and door. And if you do, you might just find yourself basking in the light, dancing in the breeze, overwhelmed with the beauty that an open door brings. So I'm opening my door and inviting in the wind to rustle up my heart and start over again. For sweeping the truth under the rug has never gotten us far. So may the wilderness be like a bird in your house. Throw open your doors. The truth must come out. Our centering hymn this evening is Open My Eyes.
that I may see. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. Our scripture this evening is from the Gospel of John, chapter 9, verses 1 through 17 and 35 through 39. This is the Common English Bible Translation. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. Jesus' disciples asked, Rabbi, who sinned so that he was born blind, this man or his parents? Jesus answered, neither. This happened so that God's mighty works might be displayed in him. While it's daytime, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After he said this, he spit on the ground, made mud with the saliva, and smeared the mud on the man's eyes. Jesus said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam. That word means sent. So the man went away and washed, and when he returned, he could see. The man's neighbors and those who used to see him when he was a beggar said, Isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said it is, and others said, No, it's someone who looks like him. But the man said, It's me, yes. So they asked him, How are you now able to see? He answered, the man they called Jesus made mud, smeared it on my eyes and said, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went and washed, and then I could see. They asked, where is this man? He replied, I don't know. And then they led the man who had been born blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus made the mud and smeared it on the man's eyes on the Sabbath day. So Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. And the man told them, He put mud on my eyes, I washed, and now I see. Some Pharisees said, This man isn't from God because he breaks Sabbath law. Others said, How can a sinner do miraculous signs like these? So they were divided. And some of the Pharisees questioned the man who had been born blind again. What do you have to say about him? since he healed your eyes. He replied, he's a prophet. Later, Jesus heard they, the Pharisees, had expelled the man born blind. Finding him, Jesus said, do you believe in the human one? He answered, who is he, sir? I want to believe in him. Jesus said, you have seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking to you. The man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped Jesus. Jesus said, I have come into the world to exercise judgment so that those who don't see can see, and those who see will become blind. It seems that Jesus is talking about more than physical blindness. What does it mean to truly see? Consider what you may be blind to and use these moments of reflection to ask for guidance to see more clearly God, yourself, others, and the world around you.
Please join me in this prayer from Sarah Bessie. O oh, holy and loving God, we pray for endurance in hearts, minds, soul, and strength, comfort to sing in sorrow, to sing in rage, to sing how well it is with our souls, with tears in our eyes, space to lament, to grieve what has been lost and the toll it has taken from us, ability to love the world again, to be nourished by creation, body and soul, to plant gardens in the wilderness, to awaken to the colors of the sunrise, knowledge that the Holy Spirit draws nearest to us in wilderness, darkness and loneliness, Peace that is in us and through us and about us in laughter around the table, glimmers of reconciliation, friends who become family. So may we go forth in peace, in power, in song, and in solidarity to topple empires, to gather up the lost and lonely into the great family of God, to plant gardens in exile to turn swords into plowshares, and to make peace. We have come to the end of our time together this evening. The wilderness may seem like the last place to go for inspiration and illumination, yet that is exactly where Jesus went. Maybe it is precisely because in the midst of nothing, What's important becomes more clear. May your week ahead be filled with insight and you are able to respond in love. Let us depart tonight singing the servant song. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims on a journey. We're together on this road. We are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the 